How's it going everyone? I'm Kyle and this week's video is all about the Mind Sensors Sensor Multiplexer for EV3. The Sensor Multiplexer that we're going to be exploring in today's video is a piece of third party hardware made by a company called Mind Sensors. And what this multiplexer allows you to do is plug in three sensors into one sensor port. So it allows you to expand the maximum number of sensors you can use with the EV3 at any one time. It works by taking that one sensor port and splitting it into three separate channels and it continuously pulls back and forth and cycles between those three channels and reports all of the sensor data from the three connected sensors back through that single sensor port. And obviously there are a lot of really awesome things that you can do having additional sensors and you can make super intelligent robots that are more aware of their surroundings and that have more sensors that can measure what's going on. Of course hardware like this isn't allowed in competitions like uh, First Lego League or World Robotics Olympiad but it's really cool if you're working on it for your own projects at home. So today we're going to start by diving right into the hardware of this sensor. This is the EV3 sensor multiplexer. As you can see, it's a very simple looking piece of hardware. You just have the board on the bottom here on which we have mounted four of these RJ12 style cable connectors, which is what the EV3 uses. All of the different ports are labeled on the red side of the base here. So in the bottom right corner, we have host. This is where you're going to plug the multiplexer into the sensor port on the EV3 and from there it's going to split that one sensor port into three different channels which are labeled channel 1, channel 2, and channel 3. And these three channels are where you plug in your additional sensors. And these channels of course correspond to the ports on the programming block which I'll show in just a moment. You can attach this sensor multiplexer to the EV3 brick using these pins which are the uh, cross axle to friction snap pins and they just insert right into the baseboard like so. If you haven't already, you're going to need to import your Mind Sensors multiplexer block into your EV3 programming software. And to do that, you're going to go to the Mind Sensors website, so that's mindsensors.com, go to EV3 and NXT, click on adapters and multiplexers, and scroll down to the product page for the sensor multiplexer. This will bring up the product page, and down here at Software Libraries and Drivers, you can see the EV3 block is available for download. So download that, and after that's finished, then you can import it into your EV3 software. And I have a separate video on how to import these third-party programming blocks into your software. That's how I got all of these additional blocks, including the sensor multiplexer block that we're using for today's video. Now I want to showcase all of the features of the multiplexer block so I can give you an idea of what the multiplexer is capable of. The first thing you want to do is then choose your port just like you would with any other EV3 sensor. And this is the port that the multiplexer is plugged into. So that's the host port on the multiplexer, which has to be plugged into one of the four sensor ports on the EV3. After you select that, then you're going to choose which of the three channels on the multiplexer that you want to program. So you get channel 1, channel 2, and channel 3. So I'm just going to choose channel 2 for the sake of this video. And then you get to let the multiplexer know what type of sensor is located in that channel. So if I'm looking at channel 2, I can go either between measure or compare modes for all five of the standard EV3 sensors. So color, gyro, infrared, US, and touch sensors. So let's say I have a color sensor plugged into channel 2 of my multiplexer. I can then choose between the three different operating modes of the color sensor, just like a normal EV3 programming block. So I can choose reflected light intensity, and then this output here will give me the actual percentage of reflected light intensity that I can use in my program. And it works just like a normal EV3 programming block. So you see that it has all of the, di all of the different features of a normal EV3 sensor block, except now you're just choosing which channel is plugged in uh, to the multiplexer. This last output, success, has a logic output, so that's yes or no and that lets you know if the communication to that particular sensor in the multiplexer was successful. For most programs, this isn't something that you really need to worry about, but if you're getting more advanced and you need uh, more critical um, programming where a failure would mess up your program, this might be something that 
uh, you might want to consider using. But for most people, you can just ignore this part. So then I can also choose another sensor. So I'm going to take out another one. So in my same multiplexer in port 1, let's say in channel 3, I have a ultrasonic sensor and I want to measure the distance in centimeters. Then it's going to have an output that allows me to measure that distance in centimeters. One thing that I think is especially cool about the multiplexer programming is that mine sensors really did their homework. So you can see if you go into the flow section and you drag out a weight block, you can actually choose the sensor multiplexer and the sensors attached as a uh, condition for your weight block, which is really awesome and it's going to make using the multiplexer that much easier. You can also uh, have it for the switch case of a switch you could choose the multiplexer or even for a loop block you can choose the exit condition to be based off of a sensor in the multiplexer so that's going to make making more complex programs with the multiplexer much easier and it's a really cool feature that you don't often see with other third party sensors let's make a sample program for the multiplexer so for my robot's hardware configuration, I have one Mind Sensors multiplexer plugged into sensor port 1 on my EV3 brick. Then it splits up into three sensors. In the multiplexer channel 1, I have a color sensor. In multiplexer channel 2, I have a touch sensor. And in channel 3, I have an ultrasonic sensor. Now we can go ahead and make that sample program. So I'm going to start just by putting everything in a loop, and I'm going to take out one of these multiplexer sensor blocks so I said I had a color sensor in port 1 and channel 1 so I'm going to go to measure color and let's say I want to measure the reflected light intensity in that color sensor and I'm going to print it to the EV3 screen so I'll set it up uh, so then we can uh, print that text to the screen like so so now it's going to read the reflected light intensity of the color sensor in channel 1 and print that to the EV3 display Next, I want to do something with the touch sensor that I have in channel 2. So we can set up a switch with the sensor multiplexer and then compare the touch sensor's state. So now I'm going to set it up. Oh, remember to make sure your channel is correct. So we're in channel 2 with the touch sensor. So now I'm going to set it up so that if the touch sensor is pressed, it's going to turn motor A, which is the media motor, on at 75% power. And then if it's not pressed, it's just going to simply shut the motor off. So that's a simple on-off control that you could use with the touch sensor. Finally, I'm going to do something with the ultrasonic sensor that I have in channel 3. So we'll pull out yet another switch set to the multiplexer to compare the ultrasonic sensor state. And I'm just going to choose proximity. Make sure the channel matches my ultrasonic sensors in the channel 3. And I'm going to say if there is an object less than 15 centimeters away from my robot, I'm going to have it drive in reverse. Uh, so I'm going to take out a move tank block, simply turn it on, and I'm going to have my robot drive in reverse at 30% power. Again, positive power makes serious drive in reverse. And then if no object is sighted, then we're just going to have this simply have the robot turn its drive motors off and idle. So here's my uh, completed demo program. I'm going to download it onto the EV3 brick and see how it works. So now you've got a little taste of what the Mind Sensor sensor multiplexer is capable of. However, next week I'm going to be pushing the multiplexer to its limits to see if we can use it to make a 5 sensor line follower for the EV3. Oh yeah, so be there next week because it's going to be awesome. Thank you for watching my tutorial this week. If you haven't already, click here to check out my new book. It's called Building Smart LEGO Mindstorm EV3 Robots and it's now available on Amazon. If you found this video helpful, be sure to subscribe to my channel for more tutorials like this every Thursday. And if you have an idea for a tutorial, drop your suggestion in the comment section below. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.